What's up everybody, it's Aaron Engineered. Welcome to my channel if you're new. Welcome back if you are not. In today's video, we're gonna be taking images and putting them into EVNG so that we can mimic network topologies. Let's go. Okay, so first things first, where do I get the images? Well, there's several different ways, but uh, if you're a partner of one of many vendors like Fortinet, Cisco, Viptela, things like that, typically you can get the downloads for the images themselves and then you can refer to the documentation within EVE to upload those. But uh, if you don't have access to that, there's some Dynamip stuff that's floating around out in the internet. I'm sure if you just Googled it, uh, you'll find one pretty quickly, which is like the Cisco uh, IOS or IOL, and then it's the Cisco 7200. It's actually a Dynamips uh, image. So that one's got a little bit of a different process, but what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be taking the old versions of the Cisco viral images that I got uh, years ago that I was allowed to download since I bought the product. Now I don't use Cisco viral anymore. I do use Eve. So I'm gonna transfer those into Eve. And this is a uh, multi-step process. Uh, first of which obviously is obtaining the images themselves. Um, second of which is getting those images over to the Eve Linux uh, directory. Eve is really just running Linux, so um, we're just gonna be able to SSH into that and uh, copy the files that we need. But within that, we're gonna have to rename the folders and the images themselves. And that's kind of where it gets tricky. It's okay, there's documentation. I'm gonna show you how to do it here. Um, and this is just the way I did it. But there's also tons of documentation on EVNG's website, which is great. Um, it shows you all the supported images, shows you how to put them in, what to name them. Um, there's also videos, um, some of the EVNG creators, uh, I know they make some really good videos on how to do it as well. Um, but this is just gonna be my way of doing it and hopefully it'll help you out. Okay, so let's get started. Um, on the actual EVE website here, I'll go to the homepage so you can see how I got here. Uh, up top, there's a tons of cool stuff, obviously the downloads and the, and the different feature comparisons, which I went over in a previous video. Uh, but the documentation here is just a treasure trove of stuff. Um, how to install it, the supported images, and one of the most important tabs here, which is the Kimu image namings, which we'll be using in this video. So if you go to the supported images, it'll show you a whole laundry list of stuff here. Um, and these are the Dynamips. I kind of mentioned that earlier, uh, the C7200 that's floating around on the internet. So there, there's documentation in here to install that as well. Um, but look at this list of Kimu image names here. I mean, this is a ton of stuff that it supports, right? Everything from Aruba, Juniper, to VMware, a Windows servers, a Windows machines. So it's really easy to mimic an actual networking environment using this software. With that being said, uh, if we just take a quick look at my Eve instance here, you can see it's on my local network 192.168.0.61. If I hit add an object and click node, you'll see everything in here is grayed out. Um, and this is essentially just a list of supported images that we just looked at, um, but I can't add anything in here right now because I haven't added anything into Eve, which is what we're doing, right? This whole purpose of us being here today. Um, but again, just to give you a quick idea of what's in here, so you can see the Juniper MX, um, Linux stuff, um, and all the Cisco things you could possibly imagine, um, or they're all listed in here. But again, I can't click on anything because I don't have anything configured yet. So. How do we get these over? Well, a lot of people use uh, WinSCP, which is just a FTP uh, piece of software that's gonna transfer things between your Windows machine and your Linux instance. In this case, it's our Eve, right? So we wanna transfer the images from Windows to Linux. Me personally, I use Cyberduck. Uh, maybe I'm just a fan of the rubber ducky, a little too much Sesame Street when I was a kid, who knows. Um, but it's also available for Mac, which is kind of cool. Um, it, it does a lot of other features that I don't use, which is great though, because it does like Amazon S3 um, uh, and Microsoft Azure. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, so once you get that downloaded um, and you have your images, we can start by transferring those images using Cyberduck. Okay, once you've gotten Cyberduck downloaded, uh, all you gotta do is open it up 
Um, and then from here, what we're gonna do is connect to the Eve instance that I was just showing you. So we do have Eve, right? It's all configured. Um, there's just nothing in it. So the IP address is 192.168.0.61. So we're gonna hit open connection. And here is where we're gonna make our first little change. And we're gonna change this from FTP to SFTP. And we wanna use SSH file transfer protocol. The server is going to be 192.168.0.61 like we just saw. Our username is going to be root. The password is going to be eve, eve. -E. If you have not changed it, this would be the defaults. So hit connect, allow, and it takes me to the root folder here. From there, I'm gonna drop back down and just get to the main directory. And in here, we're gonna have to navigate to where the images are actually stored. Again, there's no images yet, but where they're actually gonna be stored in the future. And where those are, are under opt. And you can see all this stuff here, not here yet. <laughs> Unit lab, add-ons, and here's where you see a list of the, the different things that we saw over here. So let me just, Here's where you see a list of the three different image types. And I'm just gonna reference back real quickly so you guys can see, right? So we had Dynamips, IOL, and Kimu images. And we're seeing that here too, right? So that's good, we're definitely in the right place here. Now if we go into Kimu, oh my gosh, there's nothing there. That's okay. So here's where you would actually refer to the documentation on the Eve's website. And I'll link that down in the description as well. Um, but that's okay, you have me to help you walk walk you through it. Okay, so back on the website real quick, you can see that depending on what Kimu image we have or what image we've downloaded, right? So like if you have the images like I do from Viral, um, you will just have to find those in this list. But there's some important things that I wanna uh, point out here. So the name and version of your image and the folder names. So perfect example that they give you here so you'll have to name the folder which I'll open back up cyberduck here there's no folders in here yet but we're gonna have to name the folder the name of the vendor and then the version of the software that we're putting in there and this is all gonna make a lot more sense when you see me do it and again they're referencing uh, the directory that we are in as well again I'll pull up cyberduck so you can see opt unit lab add-ons Kimu yep we're right there and in this example, they're saying that this is the folder name and then this is the image name. What's interesting here is that every single one of these is different, right? So even these two different Arubas, for example, um, one's a, a switch and one's a mobility controller, they have different names. So you gotta pay attention to this. So if you're gonna add anything other than what I add for you today here, you're gonna have to make sure that you go in here and put the correct names in there so it's, it's usable. Okay, that being said, let's pop open my uh, folder here that I have the images in. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, the BIOS underscore layer two QCOW2 image, and we're gonna transfer that using Cyberduck, right, into our Eve instance. So first let's find this down here so we know what to call the folder. So we're gonna have to create a folder. Okay, so right here we see Cisco VIOS L2. Um, that is the image that I have here that I just, I just showed you guys. So let's create a folder um, to put this image in. Now you could probably rename the image here if you wanted before you transferred, but I'm just gonna do it the way they, they tell you to do it on here. Um, and this is one of the most important parts, right? So this is what we're gonna name the folder after the dash, as the documentation told us, we're gonna put the version there. So what I'm gonna write is m.03.2017. Um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna add the rest of this too. So, Adventure Prize 9K, right? Put all that in there, just for grins. All right, so let's go to Cyberduck, and let's create 
a folder and remember hold on let me move this out of the way and remember that it needs to start like this right so no matter what i do i'm gonna have to start it like that so let's do new folder vios l2 dash and what did i call this Adventurprise 9k Adventurprise 9k dash m dot oops dot 03 be helpful if I could type wouldn't it 2017 so you know that this came this is the 2017 version um, and we're just gonna hit create now boom so here we have a folder voila it's the only folder in here so I'll go back right Kimu, that's it. It's the only thing in there. So now we're halfway there. Now we're going to take this file and we are going to put it inside here. All right, so that was pretty quick. Um, and now referring back, I'm gonna close this out so we can get it out of our way. And now referring back to our, our documentation, we know that the file has to be called this. So let me scroll back up here. So this makes a little bit more sense. So this is gonna be the Kimu folder name on Eve, and this is gonna be the image name. So we do have a .qcow too, it could be a .qcow as well, but I have to change the entire image to just read what it said down here. So if we go back down, to where the heck was that all right so we go back down to vios l2 we know that this has to be called virt ioa so let's open back cyber cyber duck open back open that back up and now let's rename this to virt IOA. Yes, we want to rename it. Okay. I'm just going to hit refresh because I'm weird like that. All right, so let's minimize this. And now that we have that image loaded in there, um, technically we should be able to use it. So let's go to our Eve topology, hit add an object, add node. And would you look at that? So before when we looked in here, everything was all grayed out. You can see that now I have the ability to grab the Cisco VIOS switch. This is great because now once I'm in here um, and you can see it, it grabbed the, uh, the image. So it found it. Um, the template uh, is obviously what's gonna give you kind of like your base settings here, but just be careful of what you're doing. So you can see there's eight ethernet ports. It's only using a gig of RAM and one virtual CPU. Um, you can change this around if you want, um, but you're not doing anything crazy with it. I would just leave it the way it is. Of course, you could change the the image also. There's tons of different images in here, so that's pretty cool. Um, we'll just leave it like that, and we'll hit save. And now you see we have a lovely switch down in our corner. And we can just hit start there. Okay, so there you have it. It's pretty simple, right? Um, again, I think the documentation on the Eve website is probably the one of the most comprehensive things I've seen in a long time because there is a pay version for this right so there's a ton of people working on this in the background um, I actually have the pro edition that I paid for so I feel really good about giving back to some people that were doing a lot of hard work here really this is just a few steps that you have to take right you have to make sure that you have a uh, transferring software so whether that's win SCP or CyberDuck like I used uh, you have to have the images themselves and of course you have to have the Eve NG instance running so once you have all those together, follow along. Um, if not, head to the EVNG website, dig through the documentation, and happy labbing, folks. See ya.